Michael Swickard here. Welcome to Enchanting Stories of New Mexico. This podcast is sponsored by the Fresh Chili Company in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Our award-winning Hatch Green and Red Chili is brought straight to you from locally owned farms in Hatch, New Mexico, which you know is the chili capital of the world. Hit subscribe to automatically get these podcasts. On the last podcast, I was talking about the five New Mexico counties that are named for United States presidents. One of them was Roosevelt County, named for Teddy Roosevelt, who recruited New Mexicans for his Rough Riders group in the Spanish-American War, about 350 New Mexicans. I mentioned the five presidents of which two, Lincoln and McKinley, were assassinated while in office. A listener reminded me of an unusual assassination attempt that was uh, on Teddy Roosevelt after he had been president. See, Teddy Roosevelt served two terms. He endorsed William Howard Taft, his Secretary of State, and Taft won in 1908. Roosevelt was not satisfied with Taft as president, so threw his hat into the ring for the 1912 election. While on the campaign trail in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in October of 1912, a man shot Roosevelt from about seven feet. The bullet struck Roosevelt's 50-page speech. 50-page speech. Wow. Which slowed it down. Roosevelt went on to speak, saying he was healthy as a bull muse. That's where that label came from. He wasn't coughing blood, so he knew it didn't get to his lungs. It did get in a little bit. He had a little blood. He spoke for 90 minutes, a 50-page speech, wow, before going to the hospital where it was determined that they ought to leave the bullet just in the chest for the rest of his life, which is exactly what they did. Speaking of people connected to New Mexico who were shot, I want to talk about television actor Dan Blocker. He was Haas on the hit show Bonanza many, many years ago. Why commemorate Dan Blocker, who passed 51 years ago this week? Did you know that the very same Bobby Dan Davis Blocker was a sixth grade teacher for the Carlsbad, New Mexico Municipal School District? Well, it's true. In 1955, Dan Blocker was a teacher and a coach at Eddy Elementary in Carlsbad, New Mexico. The school is no longer used as an elementary school. It's a support facility for teachers. But there's far more to the Dan Blocker story. Speaking of getting shot, he was also an infantry sergeant during the Korean War. He was in F Company, 2nd Battalion, 179th Infantry Regiment, 45th Infantry Division in Korea in 1951 and 1952. He did was awarded a Purple Heart for wounds received while he was in combat. He and his wife, Delphia, relocated to Los Angeles, where he started his acting career. His big break, as you can probably guess, came when... He got on the hit NBC television city Bonanza, where he was selected to pay the part of one of the Cartwright sons, Eric. But you don't know him as Eric. He was Haas. He was in 415 episodes until his untimely death in May, about 51 years ago this week. I still watch old episodes of Bonanza. This is Michael Swickard with the Fresh Chili Company. Uh, It is brought to you by, of course, the Fresh Chili Company. Speaking of history, we're coming up on the 169th anniversary of the Gadsden Purchase, where the United States purchased about 30,000 square miles of what is now southern New Mexico and southern Arizona from Mexico to straighten out the border and to allow in the 1880s a southern railroad from the east to the west of our country. June 8th is the date of celebration. I think some good fresh chili company chili in a celebratory dish is in order. I'm going to go for the mama's salsa with cheese nachos because it is so good. Speaking of celebrating, Carlsbad Caverns National Park was created and formed by executive order at this time in 1930. There are two historic districts, so to 
for you to understand that the, the National Register, the Carlsbad Cavern Historical Dif District, and the Rattlesnake Springs Historic District. It's a great place to visit. If you have friends coming, that that's a good place to go. Reservations are required, and even though it may be hot up on top at the entrance, prepare for several hours of being in 58-degree weather underground. There is also the ability to see lots and lots of bats at certain times of the day. And I personally would recommend comfortable closed-toe shoes with lots of tractions, meaning don't wear flip-flops if you, if you can possibly help it. If you drive by the chili fields in Hatch, New Mexico, you'll see that the chili pepper plants, they're up, they're doing well. Come late July, the harvest will begin and run continuously from the green peppers early on to the red peppers later on up until the first frost, which usually happens along about early November. The chili farmer we work with is Scott Adams. He's a fourth-generation Hatch Valley farmer who has two grandkids working with him. That makes them sixth-generation farmers. Now, without farmers and ranchers, we would not have anything to eat. You need a lawyer occasionally. You occasionally need an engineer. You occasionally need a doctor. But you need farmers and ranchers three times a day. According to the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish, fishing is fair this week, and they want you to know that Bill Evans Lake, located approximately eight miles south of Cliff, New Mexico, that's southwest of Silver City, is now open to the public as work to improve boater access and fishing opportunities nears completion. The New Mexico Department of Game and Fish installed a new boat ramp and fishing access points, as well as improving the road access on the north side of the lake. The new boat ramp will remain closed until the water level comes up enough to launch boats safely. That's probably in June. Good news is the water level in Elephant Butte is double what it was a year ago, so all that winter snow is having an effect. The lake was only 13% full a year ago, and it is 26.3% full now. Besides more water for agriculture, it's good for boaters and, of course, fishing. And speaking of agriculture and history... It was in March 1949 that the New Mexico legislature officially adopted, are you ready, the pinyon pine as the state tree. While delightful to look at, there is another bounty, which is pinyon nuts, which are delicious. Remember, if you have some fresh caught fish, a few spices and lots of good green chili, it will make a great dinner. But there's more. There's an opportunity for culinary fame. Take a picture of your freshly caught and then cooked fish dish with the fresh chili company seasoning, be it a dry rub or salsa. Submit it to us and you can join thousands of cooks in our chili cooking sections. You upload your pictures on Facebook and tag the Fresh Chili Company or you can ask to join our private group. It's called Fresh Chili Company. Uh, fresh chili cooking and upload it there. Here's one of the recipes on the Fresh Chili Company website. It is Hatch Chili French Fries. Man, I tell you, this one sings to me. It's inspired by Ethan Chilabowski. The prep time on this one is 20 minutes. The cooking time is an hour and 15 minutes. That's a lot of time, but it serves five. It's got 270 calories, and it is delicious. So it starts with these ingredients. Fresh Chili Company Hatchup. That's the spicy hatch red chili ketchup. Hatch table seasoning. Six medium russet potatoes. One teaspoon of vinegar. 32 ounces of olive oil and salt. Instructions, boil a pot of water on medium-high heat. Preheat the oven to 450 degrees. You peel the potatoes, then slice into half-inch sheets before cutting them into one-half-inch fries. Add vinegar and a pinch of salt to the boiling water. Add potatoes and set the timer for eight minutes. Pour the fries into a colander and let the excess steam evaporate. And I don't know that I need to tell you, but I'm going to. Be careful. It's hot. 
pour olive oil over the fries on a large baking sheet, combine the fries and toss them about so that the oil completely coats each one of them, have a thin layer of extra oil on the pan. Put the pan in the oven for 15 minutes and then flip the fly, fly, <laughs> fries, I should say, over with a spatula. If they seem to still be a little dry, drizzle some more olive oil on them. Bake an additional 15 to 20 minutes. They should be somewhat brown and crispy. It'll take uh, longer if they're not crispy, but make sure you get them crispy. Put a paper towel in a bowl to absorb excess oil from the fries and sprinkle with salt and hatch table seasoning. Oh, that's good, that hatch table seasoning. Put a bowl of hatchup on the table to dip your fries into. I'm telling you, they'll go fast and you will say the magic words. Yum! That's what you will say, all right. Talking about southern New Mexico, one day I interviewed a man who came to the Las Cruces area from Michigan. I happened to ask him what brought him to our little slice of paradise. He said when he was in Michigan that it snowed 100 days in a row. 100 days in a row. And the man just snapped. He told me that he had tied a snow shovel to the top of his car and he had driven south looking for a special town. When someone in Las Cruces looked up top of his car and said, Say, buddy, what is that thing on top of your car? He knew he was where he wanted to live because the people here do not know what a snow shovel is. That was what he said. I said, sir, that's a really good story. I'm not sure I believe it, but I sure do like it. We have very little snow. And the bonus, he told me, was that he came here and he loves hatch green and red chili. Now, one thing that happens when people live in Las Cruces is that they can come by the Fresh Chili Company gift shop it is located at 1160 El Paseo Road, Suite D7A in Las Cruces, New Mexico. It is open Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So you don't have any need for shipping when you live close by and you can come by. You get to look at each jar and each thing for sale. It is good. But if you are living far away and you need to ship... Everybody should remember, if you buy 12 jars, we offer free shipping if you live in the lower 48 contiguous states, so excluding Alaska and Hawaii. Stop up and stock up and make sure you always have plenty of that, which makes everyone smile. Hatch Valley Red and Green Chili. And so you know, a case of that delicious chili would make a great present for someone who had lived here and moved away, but they still have the taste for Hatch Valley green and red chili. Also, one more thing. If you buy three jars, we will donate one jar of our award-winning Mama's Salsa to a local food bank in New Mexico. It's called Casa de Peregrinos. They provide school lunches and a lot more. They help those in need in our community. This is Michael Swickard with the Fresh Chili Company podcast, brought to you by the Fresh Chili Company. Thank you for your time today. We will always have lots of news and stories about New Mexico on this podcast. Now, the important thing is to you, if you have something you want me to talk about, something in history or culture around here, that you can always send a note to me on... Uh, Michael at FreshChiliCo.com. So FreshChiliCo is all together, no dots until you get to dot com. Michael at FreshChiliCo.com. Tell me what you'd like to hear about with the history of New Mexico. Have a great rest of your day. Oh, yes, and eat plenty of good Hatch Valley chili. Like I always say, some chili is good and more is better. Bye for now. <laughs>